A shock winner, another car flipped over, Corey LaJoy might still be out of control, plus one car caught on fire. Let's break down what happened on Saturday night at Daytona. <music> Welcome back to Break Hard, I'm Matt. Listen, Harrison Burton did something that Matt DiBenedetto never could win a NASCAR Cup Series race for the Wood Brothers. Harrison Burton scored a shock victory Saturday night at Daytona, picking up his first Cup Series victory, the 100th NASCAR Cup Series victory for the Wood Brothers, all in a season where he got fired, as he noted in his front stretch interview after the race. But hey, Harrison Burton gave a great interview, seemed super appreciative, and it's a win that no one, I mean no one, saw coming. Hats off to the Wood Brothers team. Great win for them. John Wood, that entire team have worked hard. Harrison Burton has struggled. This was his 98th NASCAR Cup Series start, and he finally gets to victory lane. You know who else took 98 races to get to victory lane? Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson. I'm not saying that Harrison Burton is cut from the same cloth as those guys, but what I am saying is sometimes it takes guys a long time to win, and after they do that, well, they might just go on to become NASCAR Cup Series champions and be dubbed the greatest driver in the world, and depending on which side of the pond you live on. But for Harrison, got that monkey off his back, got that first win, locked into the playoffs. Now, this is another one of those wins where you're like, that's not a playoff team. That's not a playoff driver. This is a fluke win. But because of the way the championship format is set up, he gets to now contend for a championship when he likely shouldn't have. His win, though, does hurt anybody trying to point their way in. Both Ross Chastain and Bubba Walls are now 23 and 27 points out going into the final race of the regular season next weekend, Labor Day weekend, the Southern 500. It is basically going to be a must win for both of them unless one of those two goes out and wins both stages and then can hope, just hope that Chris Buescher has a abysmal night uh, you know, behind them and they can try to lock themselves in. But Saturday night at Daytona, what a wild and crazy night under the lights at the beach. So to start the race, things were kind of calm for the most part, right? We were running three wide, about 10 rows deep. It looked cool. It was fuel saving, like they're all driving a bunch of Honda Insights, but it still looked cool. And then you got some guys making some moves here and there. You're like, all right, we're moving along. We're moving along. Then we have some pit stops, and Denny Hamlin lit Daniel Suarez's car on fire like they were in a live league video. So the 11 car goes to leave his pit box, and when he does and he fires off, he sparks, and that then lights his pit box, which then lights the 99 car on fire like it's a Looney Tunes cartoon. Suarez then goes around the racetrack, fully engulfed in flames by the time he gets back to pit road could not have looked calmer he give the guy the nuclear codes because he was not even phased by the fact that his entire car was on fire and the only reason he knew it was on fire he's like it was getting kind of warm in there he runs the digital rear view mirror so he didn't see looking in his mirror that the cockpit was or that the fire was basically right there almost in the cockpit with him he climbs out of the car casually weird just weird overall fire situation there melted the uh diffuser on the back of the car uh just nascar ruled it a mechanical issue so they were able to repair the car if they wanted to but an odd sort of fire that i don't think we've seen happen in a long time in the cup series if ever where another car sparks a fire it spreads across the pit box and then engulfs the other car just an odd look all around and then we get back to green flag racing we get our first big one. That would be caused by Corey LaJoy. Last weekend at Michigan, uh, after he flipped over, you know, trying to side draft the 10 car of no gregs or whatever, Dan uh, Denny Hamlin came over the radio coming to the caution uh, after he passed the flip and was like, Corey LaJoy is out of control, man. His own worst enemy. Once again, on Saturday night, he was maybe out of control again because he caused a big time pile up. He gets into the back of the 10 car of Noah Gragson and turns him around. And then he collects the 42 of John Arnimacek, the one of Ross Chastain, and then all hell breaks out behind him. Now, I know. Corey LaJoy was getting pushed by the five car. The, the contact that sent the 10 car around, that was caused by the five car of Kyle Larson. But, but... Corey LaJoy got Noah Gragson sideways before that final bump that sent him came in from the five car. So all, all around, just a big wreck, unnecessary wreck at the time, middle of the backstretch, uh, collected a lot of cars in it. I mean, a lot of cars, but a lot of people survived it and were able to keep going out of it. Chase Elliott was collected. His night was done uh, from it. But for the most part, yeah, Corey, what are you doing, man? 
Today's video is brought to you by Driven Sunglasses. Head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Use code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Great sunglasses. I am very partial to the Classic as well as the Camber. Neither of them are in my office right now. They are both downstairs because I wear them on a daily basis. So head over to drivensunglasses.com today. Code BREAKHARD at checkout for 20% off plus free shipping. Then we get back to racing. We're driving along. The 43 of Eric Jones has a right front tire go down. Martin Truex Jr. in the back of the pack has some sort of issue as well. And then all of a sudden, Shane Van Gisberg in that number 16 track, sorry, call a racing car, call a racing, wink, wink, car just absolutely grenaded like it was 2000s NASCAR Cup Series. We haven't seen an engine blow up that like that in quite some time. It had to throw the rod right through the side of the block. There's absolutely no way that that was just a you know small failure that caused a lot of smoke. That was a catastrophic failure. He even said after getting out of the car that there was absolutely no warning. It just went boom. It kablamo. If you watched uh, Formula One back on the old Speed Vision days with uh, Matchett and Hobbs, yeah, that was a kablamo moment. That thing just grenaded. Then, on a restart with about 16 laps to go, Brad Keselowski is on the front row. Austin Sendrick's on the front row as well. When he runs that Menards paint scheme, man, do you think it's Ryan Blaney every single time you see it? It was not. Uh, it was, in fact, Austin Sendrick. And they ruled that Brad Keselowski fired off first in the restart box. The control car was the two of Austin Sendrick. And they black flagged Brad Keselowski and gave him a drive-through penalty for launching first. You know, the exact same penalty they should have given Denny Hamlin back at the Richmond Spring Race when he fired first and went before the box and it should have gone to Martin Trix Jr. But hey, at least they're calling the penalty now and that's really all that matters that they're going to call this when they need to call it. Brad was not happy about it and he said that the two car spun its tires or something along those lines and that's why he got ahead. NASCAR wasn't buying it. They made the six car serve a uh, pass-through penalty. Brad still managed to finish eighth in that uh, race, so which is, hey, good for him. Uh, good run overall for Brad Keselowski. Then on lap 152, as uh, Michael McDowell is leading the race from the top lane, he gets turned by Austin Sendrick back down the racetrack, gets airborne, going up towards the fence, luckily came back down, did not flip over, did not get into the actual fence, but it was a massive massive wreck it involved a lot of people um including michael mcdowell kyle larson bubba wallace joey logano uh alex bowman tyler reddick the 51 of justin haley william byron uh ryan blaney it says that kyle Busch got some damage in this as well christopher bell ricky sinhouse jr it was a big time accident i mean michael mcdowell hit joey logano so hard it knocked logano's glasses off that's how hard of a wreck it was but at that moment you were like, okay, the car didn't flip over. Maybe that extra uh, shark fin that NASCAR added to the rear window of these cars helped keep the car on the ground. After all, we did see the 42 of John Hunter Nemechek also spin on the backstretch earlier in the race, get sideways, didn't flip over. Feeling pretty good about ourselves. The booth is talking about it. Everybody's like, yeah, NASCAR did something right here. Well, hang on a second, because... On the next accident, Josh Berry's going for the lead. Josh Berry might win his first NASCAR Cup Series race, lock himself into the playoffs in a year where Stuart Haas Racing will be closing at the end of the season. And then all of a sudden, you're thinking, oh, he's going to win this race. I was watching it, and I said to the room, what do you think Josh Berry's heart rate is right now? As I said that, he gets turned, of course. He gets sideways on the racetrack. He and Cendric, once again, Cendric is involved in something. They get sideways, and Josh Berry goes immediately up and over. He's on his roof like he was Corey LaJoy at Michigan one week ago. Slides into the inside wall at Daytona, upside down, nose first, scary accident. Um, as Jeff Burton pointed out, what's scary about it, or maybe with Steve Letarte, doesn't matter, is that Berry's upside down, and the only thing that's supporting him are his safety belts. Uh, yeah, that's scary, sketchy. Uh, the AMR safety crew was able to flip him back over pretty quickly. He got out of the car, gave a thumbs up, spoke afterwards and said, you know, hey, credit to NASCAR for building safe cars really wasn't as bad as it looked. Um, said he was really proud of himself and that entire team absolutely should be. They ran a great race. They were super competitive all night, probably had one of the three fastest cars there just in raw speed. So for Josh Berry, um, bummer of a night for it to end like that and bummer to see that shark fin not actually work and another car go up and over. The two car of Austin Sendrick, as he was spinning with him, lifted off the ground twice and set back down. So thankfully he didn't go over as well, but obviously there's a big time problem with these cars going over. Um, and as some people on Twitter and in the TikTok comments and where else are like, you guys have just gotten soft cars have flipped over forever. Yeah, they have. 
That doesn't mean that it's fine. Like these cars should definitely not be flipping over as easy as they are. And you know, NASCAR is absolutely going to be looking into this because it's definitely a major safety uh, safety issue. Then that resulted in a two lap shootout where you have, of all things, Kyle Busch and Harrison Burton lining up in the front row. Parker Retzloff in his second NASCAR Cup Series start driving for Beard Motorsports, pushing Harrison Burton on the outside line. You have Chris Rebell on the inside line pushing Kyle Busch. And you think, oh, yeah, well, those that inside line's definitely got more talent down there. They'll probably prevail here. And it looked like they were going to until that last lap when Harrison Burton gets around uh, Kyle Busch, thanks to a massive push from Parker Retzloff, and ends up stealing the win, winning the race. There was some question at the very end coming to the line. He goes down below the yellow line. Uh, NASCAR ultimately deemed that he was forced down there, basically kind of got turned by the eight car and a sense didn't gain advantage, didn't improve his position. Harrison Burton gets to keep the victory and all around wild night. Cody Ware finished P4. That's how absolutely crazy this is. Parker Retzloff comes home P6. A weird, weird, odd and odd night for everybody at Daytona, but it was an entertaining race, and that is exactly why NASCAR will have it back next year as the final race of the regular season, because you can get a random winner like Harrison Burton to lock themselves in the playoffs and create havoc, which is good and bad all at the same time. This format, man, it is something. So let me know in the comments what you thought about this entire race, Harrison Burton winning, the accidents, the flips, the fire. Joey Logano getting his glasses knocked off. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at Break Hard, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Break Hard Vlog.